Warning, there is a good chance Bitcoin Mike has no idea what he's talking about. Do your own research. Enjoy the show. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, folks, good morning. Let's take a look at those markets today. You know, very, very surprised today. You know, last night Bitcoin dropped down to like 20,600. I was thinking, oh God, I hope we hang out in that $20,000 range. Um, stock futures were low, or at least down. And stocks today are actually down. We're already down 200 points um, in the early morning or mid-morning hours. But Bitcoin's still hanging out at 20,900. This is very, very bullish to me. Um, you know, I don't know what's going to happen. It really is a flip of a coin. But I really thought Bitcoin would probably be down to the lower 20,000s right now, possibly hanging out between like 19,8 and 20,000, you know, just kind of grasping on. And we're now we're pushing 21,000. So... Whatever's going on with Bitcoin, you can't deny it's very, very bullish. Um, it almost feels like we hit a bottom at that 15,000 and now Bitcoin's basically looking for that next leg. Um, you know, Bitcoin hanging out at 20,000 for the next few months, even for like the first half of 2023 it would be actually very, very positive. Because um, once we once we get above 25,000, I mean, come on, 30,000 is almost there. And then we're pretty much halfway back to all-time highs. Folks, it doesn't take much with Bitcoin to get there. Um, we're seeing a lot of these altcoins hanging out pretty, pretty strong. You know, BNB still at 290, got XRP at 39, which XRP has actually been, uh, it, it really wants to hold on to that 38, 39 cent level. Cardano, 33 cents, not too shabby. Doge still at 8. Matic still at 93. I mean, Matic is down a little bit, but hanging on strong. Uh, Solana at about 21. And you can go down the list. I think Theta was at like 88 cents or something like that. So the big news today is Jamie Dimon. You know, when I first got into crypto in 2017, I'll never forget it. Everybody was, everybody was saying crypto was a fraud. Not only Jamie Dimon. Here's an article from 2000. This is 2017. This isn't recent. J JP Morgan CEO Jamie Dimon says Bitcoin is a fraud that will eventually blow up. I remember reading that when I first, when I bought my first Litecoin. It was, you know, things like he said and a bunch of other people, a bunch of other bankers, Bank of America, um, so many other people were calling it a fraud. Warren Buffett was calling it a fraud. And that's one reason I didn't go in as much a couple years ago. And they actually, I'm, not, I'm only going to blame myself, but people like that actually do stop people from putting money into this asset. And I would have done a lot better. But if I had listened to guys like Jamie Dimon, um, you know, Warren Buffett, you know, I would not have been able to pay off a rental property that I have. And I'd still be getting up at five o'clock every morning doing PI jobs, doing surveillance, driving around DC, miserable. I still do that a couple days a week, but... Now I have my Airbnb um, that I run. You know, it's kind of like part-time PI, part-time Airbnb. And I can pretty much do that whenever I want. I can sleep in. You know, I, I, I got the property paid off. And it's basically just easy money coming in. Um, actually, this month I have a tenant in my Airbnb for 30 days straight. So I don't, have, I don't have to go over there. It's just money coming in every day. So if I didn't, if I listened to these guys... I would still be getting up at five every day, miserable, just driving all over the place. So like I said, for the next bull market, uh, 2024, I like to get one more property and then I'll never do, I'll never work a nine to five job ever again. That's the goal. We'll see what happens. But the problem is these guys turn people off. They, they turn you off from your dream. Meanwhile, these guys, Jamie Dimon, Warren Buffett, they're telling people not to buy Bitcoin, but their funds are buying Bitcoin. Um, their companies are buying Bitcoin and they're doing just well, but they, they don't want you to buy it because they want it all for themselves. And that's really what it comes down to. So this is him in 2017. It's worse than tulip bulb. It won't end well. Um, somebody is going to get killed. <laughs> uh, I mean, Bitcoin fell to trade around the session's lows after Diamond's comments. I think this is, so this is back in 2017. So Bitcoin is probably around the same price as it is right now. But here's Jamie Diamond um, today. We, we pretty much always have some crypto conversation with you. I'm just curious because I don't think we've I, talked to you since. I think all that's been a waste of time. And why you guys waste any breath on it is totally beyond me. Because you just think the whole thing just is, is, is going to zero? Going to zero and it's fake? It, it, Bitcoin itself is a, is a hyped up fraud. It's a pet rock. You're back to that? Yeah, yeah, really? Of course, yeah. So what do you make then of, of BlackRock and other firms that are, are investing in infrastructure? 
First of all, you know, a lot of people have been playing this video today. Look at Jamie Dimon's face when he says it's a hyped up fraud. You just see that he's lying. He doesn't want you to buy it. He wants to buy all the Bitcoin. He's not even serious. The look in his face is almost like, hey, you guys know I'm fucking around, right? You guys know I have to say this, right? I mean, just look at his face. No, that, that, that's different. Blockchain is a is a technology ledger system right. that we use to move information. We've used it to do overnight repo, intraday right. repo. We've used it to we're going to use it. We've used it to move money. Right. So that is a ledger. That's a technology ledger type of thing that it, we think will be deployable. I mean, remember, we've, based on remember we've been talking about ledger, that for 12 right. years, too, and very little has been done. There's some so. tokens that, that I agree with you on, but, but Bitcoin's based on a distributed ledger. Yeah, but it, it, but it, has, Bitcoin, all, but it I, I, has all the characteristics of, of a store of value. It's, I, it's immutable. It, it's scarce. Uh, it, totally untrue. It's, it's it, 21 million. Well, yeah, really. How do you know it's going to stop at 21 million? Because it's, I've mentioned it, this to people Satoshi, too. It, Every, it, everyone it, says it, that. Well, maybe it's going to get to 21 million, and then Satoshi's picture is going to come up and laugh at you all. <laughs> <laughs> and say, no, no. But there, there is the that is funny, and I actually agree with him on that one. I mean, you know, I've always told people long, long term cryptocurrency, I'm not like the biggest believer in it. I think we have a few more bull runs left. I think we de I think next bull market for crypto is going to be insane. But where where's Bitcoin going to be in 20, 30, 40 years? I mean, you never know. You never know, folks. I mean, you, the one thing I don't like about Bitcoin and, you know, you have you have Satoshi who has that wallet he hasn't touched since the creation of Bitcoin. If that wallet ever got opened or anybody ever opened it up and started withdrawing, actually not even withdrawing, if that wallet ever became active, Bitcoin would probably just drop to zero. So there are a lot of risks with cryptocurrency. And in fact, with Bitcoin, Bitcoin's not even my, even my major holding. I'm a big Cardano guy and Theta guy. But you know, when you want to make money in this world, there's always going to be a risk. But the problem is, you know, Jamie Dimon's selling all sorts of services that are risky. Bitcoin's no different. It's a risky play. It's just like buying a stock. It's like buying Tesla or whatever. It could go to zero, but following those four-year cycles, you're going to do very, very well. But I just, I don't believe Jamie Dimon here. Um, but that is a valid point that he makes right there that, yeah, I mean, it's all technology. Um, you know, at one point, there could be something built into the code that nobody knows about that's, that <laughs> that screws that, you know, where somebody does a rug pull or something like that. Or like I said, the Satoshi's wallets could become active and it all goes to zero. But there's no investment in this world that is not risk free. But I think crypto is the safest bet following those four year cycles. Don't put don't put more money in, in that you can afford to lose and all that good stuff. You know, you don't want to put all your money. You don't want to like, take a loan to buy crypto. But if Bitcoin does what it's done since 2008, um, people are going to do very, very well. And Jamie Dimon's been talking about this since 2017, knocking Bitcoin, knocking crypto. And those who bought crypto did very, very well. Those who didn't, well, you know, not not as well. So. I, be, I truly believe that Jamie Dimon owns crypto. If you look in his, look in his eyes right here, look in his face, he's full of it. Um, he just, for whatever reason, cannot acknowledge. Almost like Peter Schiff in a way. Like I believe Peter Schiff probably owns a bunch of Bitcoin, but that's like that's like what he's peddling right now. He's peddling the anti-Bitcoin movement, and he's not going to leave that movement. Same with you know Peter Schiff and Jamie Dimon, Warren Buffett. I believe Warren D Buffett just doesn't even understand Bitcoin, doesn't care. And to be honest with you, if I had a billion dollars, I wouldn't care about Bitcoin either. But anyway, that's the Jamie Dimon news. <clears throat> Found this other story. Uh, is, Car is Cardano founder Charles Hoskinson making a bid to buy Coindesk? Wouldn't that be interesting? It looks like Coindesk is for sale. I think they're asking, was it like $10 million or something like, I don't even know, maybe more, I don't know. But that would be fascinating if Charles Hoskinson does end up buying Coindesk. Now it's all speculation right now. Of course, uh, Coinde Coindesk is kind of like any other news organization, but they cover crypto. But wouldn't that be kind of cool if Charles Hoskinson owned this and he could basically put a bunch of Cardano stories on Coindesk, I mean, it'd probably be like if he owned Coin Coindesk, it'd probably be like ninety percent um, Cardano stories. So wouldn't, that would be awesome. That's why I'm a big believer in Cardano. Um, I trust Charles Hoskinson, and yeah, look, I mean, if he if he buys Coindesk, just off him buying Coindesk, you'll probably see Cardano like double just off the news. Because when you own a media company, you control the narrative. 
Um, so I'm going to be following this story. Now, it's all rumor right now. It's all speculation. But there was a, treat, a, a tweet from Charles Hoskinson that he might be looking into doing that. Um, also found this article about the metaverse. Metaverse to bring true uh, productivity to industrial environments, 2023. You know, one of the biggest pumpers um, for crypto in 2021 was metaverse. A lot of these metaverse coins went absolutely crazy. And you could put Theta in that group, but a lot, all these other ones like Vulcan Forge, MetaHero, I mean, there's so many of them. Just go on KuCoin and type in metaverse, you'll see them all. Most of them are down like 99%. But people who bought those coins in 2019, 2018 made millions and millions of dollars. Unfortunately, I was not one of those people, but you could have bought coins like Vulcan Forge for two cents and it went up to like $30 or something like that. Now it's down to like $3. I have a shit ton of it right now. Um, I think Vulcan Forge will be like $100 next bull market. But I think right now investing in the metaverse is very, very smart. It's kind of like investing in the metaverse in 2019 before the last bull market. And like I said, my, my two big metaverse plays are Theta um, and, um, and Vulcan Forge. So we'll see what happens with that. So I found this article, the top three Web3 cryptocurrencies. Um, and I wasn't even really sure exactly what Web3 was. I just knew Theta, Theta, Theta was on the list. Theta also falling under Metaverse, falling under Web3. That's why I love Theta. It's like a jack of all trades. And you have Theta down here. Theta, a peer-to-peer -peer Web3 network. Theta's goal is to allow users to send video to users from giant enterprise access like Sony, Samsung, Google. The current value of Theta, okay, 88 cents, blah, 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 blah. And I wanted to get a little bit more information about Web3. So here's kind of like a little bit of rundown. Web3 in the future, uh, decentralized protocols like blockchain, the technology behind Bitcoin transactions will be employed in the Web3 revolution. It aims to overcome some of the primary drawbacks and flaws of the present internet era by tackling the crucial concerns of data ownership and control. Users can access their data thanks to the Web3 platform. As a result, People won't have to rely on major tech corporations to supply services to one another or manage the components of the internet they utilize. Then you have uh, Metaverse, which also Theta falls under Metaverse. A global 3D network of virtual reality worlds is the Metaverse. It is frequently defined as hypothetical versions of the internet as a single worldwide virtual environment made possible by using virtual and augmented reality headsets and futuristic and scientist fiction fictional works metaverse will develop as one as a new world and will include various elements like vr chat rooms online games online activity centers and so on and it goes on so that's kind of what another reason i like theta folks not only is it web3 it also falls under the metaverse it's a jack of all trades i love my theta um it's basically you know the future the fu the future is theta um, it's just ahead of its time and, uh, Theta is going to do very, very well the next bull market. Um, I hope it goes back down to 75 cents because I will be my buying some more Theta. A little bit of Sam Bakeman Freed news. You know, Sam Bakeman Freed is still swearing up and down that he can repay back U.S. customers. Now I've been saying this since day one. Um, you know, the FTX.US exchange was a lot smaller than the other one and Apparently, it should have been solvent because it was under U.S. regulations. So Sam bakeman fried doubled down on his claims that FTX.US affiliate was and is solvent. The collapsed crypto exchange, New Bosses, said FTX US didn't have enough to return to customers. Now, this is what the, the CEO says. But bankman fried pushed back, saying they hadn't included $428 million of cash in their calculations. So... I've been saying this since day one. I was on FTX and I got my money off. You know, I told you guys to get your money off. I didn't have much on FTX. I had like under a thousand dollars. But I was telling people, I think when it's all said and done, that FTX.us will be solvent. This is just speculation on my part. But unfortunately, um, you probably won't get your money back for like another year. So you might miss the next bull market. Anyway, that's the Sam Bakeman Freed news. He's on house arrest at his mommy's house, um, and he's still making his tweets every day. Folks, like and subscribe. Bitcoin's still hanging out at 20900 Not too shabby. Look, Bitcoin is holding on strong. You know, I really thought there was a possibility of Bitcoin be back down to $18,000 now, and it wants to hang out high. To me, that is a sign we could. This could be the next leg up for Bitcoin, hanging out at twenty in the twenty thousand dollar range for the next few months until we get that next kick up to twenty five thousand. 
we'll see what happens. Thank you so much, folks. Talk to you later.